Yes, it is new. New, new, new. All right, let's do this. New, new. Okay, first up. New, new, new. Yeah. It's a huge new. Yeah. It's the other, other milk, milk pro. pro. Yeah, we have the other mill, which we've been carrying from other machine. It is a desktop CNC mill. It's really great. It can cut circuit boards, which is what we use it for. We prototype our PCBs on it before we send them out for manufacture. Um, and it's excellent for that. It can do 10, 10 mill boards if you really want to. Uh, it can also etch uh, soft metals, uh, casting wax, um, brass and bronze. Uh, it can cut chocolate if you want. Um, it can do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, it's a very powerful tool, and this new version, the, the Pro version, is even more precise and more powerful. So um, they're kind of upgrading their capabilities to do more and more, uh, higher precision, more power, um, probably even a little bit faster. So iterating and improving on the other mills, this is the latest one. Check it out. 10% off is actually a pretty good deal. Yeah, if you want really to get deal. one, now's a good time. Yeah, and you know, I had to all the things, the Pro, external power supply, uh, the toolkit that it comes with. It comes with Hello, parts yeah. and projects. <laughs> and it has a bunch of stuff. So we use one at home and at the office. Yeah. All right, next up, Lady Anna. Ready? Yep. Ooh, this is um, the Zero for You, and I'll show this on the overhead as well. It's kind of interesting. So this is a, a, a USB hub for the Raspberry Pi, and what's neat about it is it uses these little pogo pins and you uh, clamp it to the Pi and it, it uses the pogo pins to connect to the data and power pins on the Pi Zero to give you a four port hub. Um, you can add external power if you want. You can also power oh, it with the be. Mini B, but it's a very cute little sandwich. So yeah. we carry, uh, you know, standard four port hubs as well, um, if you want a four port hub, but it is kind of neat to see this because it's like, hey, it's like a, it's a hub, but it's in a weird shape. Um, it is in a uh, Pi Zero shape, and you can see here the little pogo pins that it uses to um, grab onto the power and data pins right underneath here. And it comes with the screws and everything, and then you even get the GPIO free, so you still have all the flexibility, but it's like a nice little hat. Well, bonnet for your yeah. pie that adds uh, a USB hub so very handy not you know, it's it's not the most inexpensive way to add a hub but it is the cutest yeah okay so I like it next uh, you ready yes so I've been asking um, I've been asking for a spy camera for a while yeah you've known that I, I, I keep asking for it Where's my spy camera? Where's my spy camera? Where is my spy camera? Where is my spy camera? Where's my spy camera? Where's my spy camera? Here's your stupid spy camera! Thanks, man. It's finally here, a spy camera. Yeah, you have a spy camera. I've been asking every day for four years. Yeah, you have been uh, you have been relentlessly making me watch that Simpsons clip for since we started testing this out. This is a little spy camera, and I've actually tried to carry something like this for a while, and finally, we got a really good one. This is kind of the guts of like a, a keychain camera or like a spy camera. It is, um, it's not a microcontroller that you can program. It's kind of an all-in-one thing. Has a little uh, 720p uh, camera display. This is the little camera module itself and it has a chip on it and basically what it does is you power it up and you can control it with that one white wire. Well, if you give it power with the red and black wire, you can use the white wire to control it and it can do two things. It can take photos and it can take videos. Here's a photo. And here's a photo. And if you um, Time -lapse. pulse the pin you can have it take multiple photos that you can then turn into a time lapse which is what I did we just stuck it out the window for an hour and grabbed you know 150 photos or so and then we just turned it into an animated gif um, this is really handy if you want to make a custom project where you want to do a time lapse or you want to take video remember you can't send it commands like a microcontroller all you can do is pulse that trigger pin and if you do a small pulse it will like a, take a button press, it will take a photo. And if you hold down that white wire to ground for over half a second, it will start taking a video and it will continue taking video until you hold that white wire to ground again. And so you get one wire that, depending on how you toggle it, gives you a photo and or video. And um, it has a microphone, so if you do do video, it will give you a little bit of audio as well. It's not awesome audio, but it does work 
um, to warning people before they're like, hey, it's just my spike camera it doesn't have great audio. It doesn't have great audio, um, but it does work Do really right? well. Yes, yeah, so let me show on the overhead. So this is, um, this is just a spy camera as you get it. So the module, and then there's this um, SD card. You can put up to like a 32 gig SDHC card in it. It has this like weird USB connector, but we give you a cable. I don't know what is this weird USB. It's non-standard, but you get a cable. It, when you plug it in, it shows up like a disk drive so you can drag the files off of it. Uh, it doesn't have a battery charger in it, um, but it has a regulator it seems, and, and it has this little chip that is some, ASIC that all it does is video and photo capture. And here's a little microphone for your spy camera. And then, you know, of course, here is the, the module itself and the control wire. So the, to make the time lapse, what I did is I took the spy camera and I cut that cable. And uh, we'll do a little write-up on this. We just connected um, the three volts ground and power lines to the trinket and then um, the white wire to GPIO zero. Uh, soldered in the connector for a LiPo battery, and it just uh, takes photos every um, 15 seconds. Although, you know, I had it on and then the battery died, so I'll, maybe I'll grab another battery really fast in a minute. But um, as a, you know, as a tool to make like little mini video cameras or life casting projects, this is a pretty good one because it just kind of, it's very simple and it just kind of works and okay. it's very, very small, so you can put it anywhere you want. All right. It's very compact, especially mm. when you pair it with a microcontroller. So you get like time-lapse control or video control or sensor to video or whatever you want. All right, I'll think of something to ask you every single day for the next four years. Okay, okay. next up, uh, what is this? Okay, so this is the CP2104 friend. friend. <laughs> uh, we've had the FTDI friend for a very long time, which is a FTDI USB to serial converter chip. Uh, very handy for when you have a device that has uh, a UART but doesn't have USB, like some Arduino compatibles or ESP8266s or other microcontrollers that don't have native USB. You can bootload them and or communicate them over UART. This is your USB to UART converter because we don't have COM ports on computers no more. Um, we've, like I said, we've had the FTDI friend for a while. FTDI friend is a lovely friend, but it has um, some downsides. One is it doesn't go at extremely high f frequencies. Like you can do up to like 900 kilobaud. This one goes up to two mega baud. So you get really high speeds, which is sometimes desirable. I've also found that you can do lots of different flexible speeds. Like if you have weird baud rates you want to do, um, the FCDI does them, the CH430 does not the, C the uh, PL2303 also has difficulty with that. Um, I like that this one has uh, LEDs, so you get RX and TX LEDs, so you can see data going in and out, which is kind of nice. And it's very inexpensive compared to the FTDI chip. So for 99.9% .9 of uses, this is an excellent um, alternative to an FTDI adapter at a really great price. And uh, Scilabs is an excellent uh, chip company. They make really good quality products. Um, these are genuine parts, never had any issues with them. They kind of work flawlessly on all operating systems. Um, so I like that we have an alternative. I thought I would show it on the overhead, the two ways you can use it. Okay. So it comes with um, the assembled board and then you get some right angle header and some male header. For if you want it to act like an FTDI friend, and this is like the old style FTDI friend, um, you can solder the header into it and now you're like, hey, it's like little sister and big sister has a micro USB connector and is otherwise um, about the same size, a little bit smaller because the chip is so much smaller compared to um, this one. It has the RX and TX LEDs down here instead of on the side, but the pinout is the same. You can interchangeably use them. However, it, because we have more space, I was like, well, let's break out all the other pins as well. So if you want DSR and DCD and ring and CTS, all the other um, pins, there's also a three volt output that if you really want to get like 3.3 .3 volt uh, for small projects, you can grab that from there. And um, if you want to use that, you will solder in, oh, where did it go? Hold on. Did you look at where? I had a version with the header soldered in. Oh, here it is. Sorry, you can uh, solder headers in and then you can plug it into your breadboard as you wish. Grab a breadboard. And you basically have um, all the pins and you can sort of like edge launch it off of 
your breadboard and wired up to your microcontroller. So you get the best of both worlds, as they say. Okay. Is this universe where you have FTDI friends. So this is it plugged into a Pro Trinket. So yeah, we've tested this with, we actually use the CP2104 on um, a bunch of boards. So it's like, it is like a rock solid chip. And uh, so we'll be slowly moving away from FTDI and replacing um, those chips with Scilabs because we, it allows us to drop the price on from stuff. one friend to another friend. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, okay. We All still right. like FTDI. We just uh, want to try another friend for a little bit. It's not you, it's us. Yeah, okay. So the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, is this module. The internet's going bonkers over this. Yay. It's the CSP32 module. We're selling it, these. It's yeah. Crazy. How do we, we have these? We Ooh. have modules. Well, Espresso sent us a bunch. Um, they said, hey, if we sell them to, send them to you, will you sell them? And we're like, yeah, sure. So we are selling individual modules. Um, right now, I think of a max of five, but we'll release, we'll, we'll bump that up as, as you know, people get them. We want to just make sure everyone has a chance to develop with these. And these are um, for developers. At this time, they're not certified. When they're certified, they'll have certification logos on them. They are for people who want to design their own ESP32 boards and they want modules to prototype with so they get a sense of you know, whether this is going to work out for them. Um, they're lovely little modules. They're, they're tinned. They have great performance. They're designed by and manufactured by Expressive, which means um, you're going to get really, really good RF performance because they tuned it to be exactly the right antenna and the right components and the right layout and everything. So you're going to get like, this is kind of as good as it's going to get for the modules. This is the, the official one. Um, and these came from Espressif themselves. So check that out. Um, we have them at a very good price so that okay. they're not that much more expensive than using an ESP8266 module. And then on the bottom, you can have all the pinouts. Okay. Check the data sheet for layouts, diagrams, and you need a couple extra components on there as well. And with that, with new products.